I spent the last couple of weeks with both the Intel and the AMD version of the Surface Laptop 4, and I have some thoughts, primarily being, what was Microsoft thinking? How is this acceptable? And why? Because Microsoft has implemented different things that make the Surface Laptop 4 both a great Windows notebook, but then also a pretty bad one, depending on how you're looking at the situation. There are compromises that you have to make depending on which version of the Surface Laptop 4 you want to buy, and I just don't see why because they're not the typical concessions that you make when building out a laptop. I don't see many other laptop manufacturers making these decisions. And before we get into the details of what the Surface Laptop 4 has wrong with it, I want to mention that it is a very capable thin and light machine. The build quality is absolutely fantastic. The Alcantara finish on the chassis feels spectacular. I'm glad that they brought it back for the Laptop 4. You have the glass touchpad, which performs admirably. The touchscreen plus the Surface Pen support make it great for input. And the battery life on the Surface Laptop 4 performed better than any other Windows laptop that I've ever had my hands on. You add on to that that the Tiger Lake chips plus the Ryzen 4000U series chips are both admirable in their CPU performance and their GPU performance on the go that they make for really great portable machines. I actually really like the Surface Laptop 4, but there's a lot of key considerations to think about before you dive into buying one. And one key consideration that you should have is checking out today's video sponsor, Skillshare. And in case you haven't heard of them before, Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. I've absolutely loved that they uploaded something specifically for YouTube creators by Marquez Brownlee, YouTube success, script, shoot, and edit with MKBHD. And that's just one of the inspiring classes that you'll get unlimited access to with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. I've absolutely appreciated seeing MKBHD's perspective of going from start to finish on a tech review, and I've already started implementing some of those things on our channels here. But in case you're not looking to develop your YouTube skills like I am, that's okay because they have dozens of different topics for you to choose from, from freelance and entrepreneurship to film and video, marketing, graphic design, photography. It's all there for you to explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and just get lost in creativity. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes like the one with MKVHD, so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. I'm always on a journey to improve my life, which is why I'm thankful for Skillshare and my life as well as a video sponsor and the first 1,000 of my subscribers who click the link in the video description can get a free trial of the Skillshare premium membership. So check it out at the link in the video description. Again, big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. But let's talk about things that they compromised on that aren't related into the configurations because that's gonna take a huge chunk of our time. But number one is we're in 2021 and the IO on these Surface Laptop 4s are just bad. It's a USB-A, a USB-C, and a welcome headphone port, and then your Surface Power Port on the right-hand side. There is no Thunderbolt for extra expandability. There's no high-speed USB connection going on. It's actually pretty plain for a thin and light. So let's compare the Surface Laptop 4 to a couple key competitors in that arena. The Yoga 6, which is also another thin and light, comes with a USB-C, a USB-A, a headphone port on the left-hand side, just like the Surface Laptop 4 does, but then also has an additional USB-A and USB-C see on the right hand side. This is a laptop that is much smaller and much more portable than what Microsoft has come out with. And then anybody who likes to mock the dongle life on MacBooks, it's kind of the same situation. You don't get USB-A on a MacBook Air, but you get two USB 4 or Thunderbolt 3 ports, which then allows you to convert into a dongle. Microsoft's solution for the Surface Laptop 4 is that you have to purchase the additional Surface dock for right now on sale, $165, but typically right around $250. It's only then that you get the expanded ports. You would have to implement some sort of dongle feature just like you would have to on a MacBook Air. It's very clear from both the styling of the Surface Laptop 4 as well as the pricing that they're aiming directly at Apple with their MacBook Air with the Surface Laptop 4 lineup. And while the Surface Laptop 4 might be one of the better Windows laptops out there, the compromises Microsoft just decided to go to make it very confusing, like not having a Thunderbolt port for any sort of expandability. Having no dedicated GPU on the laptop means that you're compromised in certain things such as gaming or video encoding acceleration, but that could be solved if there was a Thunderbolt port. But Microsoft seems to say 
say that there is a security vulnerability for that, which is why they don't offer upgradable RAM, and they also don't offer Thunderbolt. However, it seems like every other manufacturer has gotten around that in order to introduce Thunderbolt, so it doesn't seem to be that large of a concern. So even though the MacBook Air might have the same I.O., it at least gives you Thunderbolt so that you can attach multiple accessories that give you that extra speed and advantage over the Surface Laptop 4. And now let's talk about the configurations because these seem to make very little sense. If you want to get 512 gigabytes of storage on the Intel version of the Surface Laptop 4, that's simple. You spend $1299, you get the i5 processor plus that 512 gigs of storage. But if you want 512 gigs of storage on the AMD version, you cannot get the Ryzen 5, nor can you get the base model Ryzen 7 for $999 and $1299 respectively. No, you have to bump up your price to $1,500. You not only have to buy the Ryzen 7 chip because the storage configuration isn't available with Ryzen 5, but you also have to buy the 15 inch version, which brings your total into $1,500. So in order to get the 512 gigabytes of storage on the Ryzen version, you have to spend $200 more than you have to on Intel. But that's not where it stops. If you want to get the highest spec version when it comes to RAM and SSD, you will have to buy the i7 in order to get that one terabyte of storage and 32 gigabytes of RAM. You cannot get a one terabyte Ryzen 7 Surface Laptop 4. Microsoft is just not selling it, which is just absurd, especially when you consider the benchmarks. The Ryzen chips perform better at a lot of tasks versus the Intel ones. The i5 and the i7 are both four core eight thread processors. The Ryzen 5 is six cores and 12 threads and the Ryzen 7 is eight cores and 16 threads. You get an extra amount of multi-core enhancement on the Ryzen chips, but you cannot get it with extra storage options, which is incredibly weird because the people who would want the multi-core enhancements are likely the people who are using the for productivity reasons and would want the extra storage to store all of their projects. A Premiere Pro project, any video that we work on takes up tens of gigabytes and so I'd only be able to store a couple at a time. And then you can't even go to external storage because you only have two ports unless you want to shell out money for the Surface Dock 2. It very much feels like from both the first rollout of AMD chips with the Surface Laptop 3 and now with the Surface Laptop 4, they are half committing to implementing AMD. Even though in things like Cinebench, AMD very clearly beats out Intel when it comes to their multi-core scores because it simply has more cores. But also battery life. On my Surface Laptop 4, my AMD Ryzen 5 got a 23% better battery life score than the Intel version. And this is something that Microsoft is explicitly saying as well. Their quoted battery lifetimes for their Surface Laptop 4 are higher on AMD than they are for Intel. And so they're forcing this compromise of high CPU performance versus actually having the rest of your system be a complete package. If you want a complete package, you can't buy the Surface Laptop 4 because it's kind of unacceptable to buy an i7 four core processor and get 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD for 2,400 bucks when you could just as simply buy a gaming laptop or another laptop that gives you more expandability. And so all of these baffling choices that Microsoft has made with the Surface Laptop 4 lead me to think that one of three things is true. It's either number one, their primary motive with the Surface Laptop 4 is to sell you an incomplete device so that you go ahead and buy their Surface Dock. Number two, they have financial incentive, whether it's from marketing funds or getting paid on the back end from Intel to make sure that the AMD versions of their laptops are not as well equipped as the Intel version. I'd like to think that it's not a backroom deal, but rather a front room deal where Intel's willing to pay for marketing of the Intel version of the Surface Laptop 4. So Microsoft has a higher financial incentive to actually go with them because it's gonna sell more devices. It's hard to say rather than a backroom deal. But the third option is that if you want a more complete experience, they want you to not buy the laptop four, but rather the Surface Book 3. You want a dedicated GPU, you're gonna to have to get the Surface Book 3. That's why we're not giving you Thunderbolt to put an eGPU on your Ryzen laptop. You want something more functional, go ahead and spend the extra money 
on the Surface Book 3 because we'd rather you buy that device. But not all of this is to say that Microsoft hasn't put some effort into the AMD versions of their chips. It was actually worse with the Surface Laptop 3. In the Ryzen 3000 series of the Surface Laptop 3, they didn't have Wi-Fi 6 while the Intel one did. That has now changed where AMD has Wi-Fi 6 on this laptop. But it's just really confusing. And one of the reasons why all of this is so confusing is because of some of the performance numbers that the Surface Laptop 4 puts up. The Intel versus AMD are very much head to head in certain scenarios. The Tiger Lake chips beat out the Ryzen 4000 U series processors in single core performance, but the Ryzen chips beat it in multi-core performance. The Project Z graphics do better in things like quick sync accelerated projects like Premiere Pro and can also give you some good gaming. But when it comes to actually needing more than one single core and thread in games like Fortnite, the Ryzen chips actually do a lot better. And the compromises that Microsoft has chosen to make with the Surface Laptop top four don't make a lot of sense given the context of the competition that's out there. Microsoft has constructed a scenario where you can't have the best of both worlds even though they very clearly could implement that. They don't give you the option of choosing what's best for your scenario. You're simply forced into choosing Intel if you want more RAM and SSD and AMD if you want to spend the least amount of money. And that honestly isn't the way that it should be. The Microsoft Surface Laptop 4 is trying to position itself as a MacBook Air competitor and it gets really close but it sacrifices on things where it should be very compelling. You should be able to get a Ryzen series chip with high-end storage because that would make a great on-the-go portable machine where you'd be able to hold all of your projects. You could give us more I.O. You could even implement Thunderbolt Microsoft. You're just choosing not to. I'd love to see an upgrade to the Surface Laptop 5 or hopefully even an upgrade to the Surface Book 4 where you you take AMD more seriously because they are providing a lot of benefit to the end user and you're kind of just kneecapping them all over the place here. So those are my thoughts on the Surface Laptop 4 decisions Microsoft has made here that are not very good, that don't make a whole lot of sense. But in case you want to see a deep dive on my review of them, you can go check it out on our second channel, Brainus. We have the review of the Intel version right there, as well as the review of the AMD version right there, where you can get more performance specific numbers.